All right, so my question is, we got the red line that seems to match the red horse. Could Isis be the black horse? So I just put some photos up for you. Guess what? They wave black flags around. They don black uniforms. And this is something novel. This is something new. I mean, months ago, nobody even knew about Isis. Suddenly, they seem to pop out of nowhere. Really, they didn't pop out of nowhere. You know, they're, they're just Al-Qaeda. They're rebranded, refunded, regrouped Al-Qaeda in a more vicious uh, uh, form. But they pop up and look at them. What happened to all the green that we used to see? Suddenly, black, black, black. After the red horse, the black horse. There's the omen written thousands of years ago about the Assyrian. There's quite a few scriptures about this, so I'm just going to pick two for you. This one happens to be very well known among Christians. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24 to 27. O oh, my people that dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Italian. No. Don't be afraid of the Belgian. Don't be afraid of the French. Now, what other countries have we been picking on for end time? I, I hear all this and I think, why don't we just read the Bible? It doesn't say any of that. It says, don't be afraid of this one, the Assyrian. He shall smite you with a rod and shall lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt. Even compares it. Says history repeats itself. Just like it happened in Egypt, a great oppression of the Jews, so it will be again in the end times with the Assyrian. Verse 27, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What's it talking about? Who's, whose burden? The Assyrian's burden. Whose yoke? The Assyrian's yoke. The Assyrian is the future enemy that will require the anointing to destroy. And the anointing, of course, is Jesus Christ. The anointing is the English word for the Greek word Christ. Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah. It's exactly the same thing. So there will be an ultimate enemy that will come that will require the anointed one to destroy. So our focus cannot be on the French, cannot be on the Belgian. We have been forewarned that the one to look at is the Assyrian. The problem is, if we don't know history, and I put myself in there, I was scratching my head for a long time. I thought, who is the Assyrian? Who is the Assyrian? You look on a map right now, there's no country called Assyria. There is a country called Syria. And I'd say that's pretty close, but still, you know, close. My dad says close only counts for horseshoes and hand grenades. So we, we want to be exact when it comes to the Bible. Isaiah 14, verse 25, I will break the Assyrian in my land and on my mountains tread him underfoot. Then his yoke shall be removed from them and his burden removed from their shoulders. Whoever is the Assyrian, he is going to invade Israel. He's going to be in the mountains of Israel before he gets destroyed. So if ISIS qualifies as Assyria, ISIS will be invading Israel. So the question is, what is Assyria? Where is Assyria? And you look at, you know, the empires, the ancient empires, they no longer exist today. So the boundaries of these nations, they don't match today's political boundaries. So you find that Assyria overlaps with Babylonia, right? Even overlaps a little bit with Medo-Persia. But you can kind of see that that's where Assyria is. Certainly includes Syria, but it seems to include a little bit of Babylonia, doesn't it? So I was scratching my head for a long time because I thought, I'm not going to look at Europe. I don't think that's where the Bible's talking about. I'm looking at the Middle East and I'm scratching my head, where is Assyria? And then you look, you compare Assyria to ISIS and guess what? That's it. There wasn't territory that matched it until a few weeks ago. You see, this is why we got to start with the Bible and stay with the Bible. It doesn't matter what the map looks like. It doesn't matter what the news says. It doesn't even matter what the most, you know, best-selling, famous prophet says. 
Just look at the Bible and just wait. It will come. It will happen. So now we definitely got the equivalent, the modern equivalent of Assyria. It's on the map now and it's growing. The Black Horse took control of Iraq's largest oil refinery, Beji. And one of their goals is, set, is to set the oil fields of Iraq on fire because that would cripple the global economy. Would that not be a really fast way to cripple the global economy? You know how the uh, price of things are determined. It's first by the price of oil because the price of oil determines the price of transportation. And go back and read Revelation chapter 6. What are we talking about? We're talking about a financial disaster that is looming at the black horse uh, sequence. When the lamb broke the third seal, I heard the living being say, Come. I looked up and I saw a black horse and its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. All right, now when I was little, people, merchants used to come with scales uh, in Thailand and weigh things. That's how people you know, uh, traded, did commerce. Today, we think, you know, we hear scale, we think of weighing your, yourself. This is not about your own weight. This is a metaphor for the economy. So he's got a pair of commerce scales in his hand. And when I heard a voice from among the four uh, living beings say, a loaf of wheat bread and three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay and don't waste the oil and the wine. So in other words, um, there's going to be inflation of food prices. And that's how people get mad. And that's how people start killing each other. Right? So what's happening around the world? You see inflation of food prices all over. The price of food is going up. And guess what? It's not going to stay there. It's going to keep going up. And the black horse is going to try to trigger something that will ca cause the cost of living to go up exorbitantly. So the black horse is simply high. Thank you.